Hey everybody, Chris Newhan here, and I'm going to show you a little piece of Cabin in the North Woods, the short film that I just finished. It's actually part of a series, so I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to release it yet because, because it is a series, I don't want to release this and not have anything else out for a while because it's probably going to take at least another month for the next one to be done. But I do have a lot of tutorial content that I'm going to do from it, including this. I'm going to give you an overview of the process. I'm going to play just a little piece of this. Okay, that's all I'm going to play for now. I created a production process that's not exactly what I was headed towards when I started doing the tutorial on the series of tutorials on building a whole character rig. And it's one of the reasons why I haven't put out a new uh, video on that because I'm rethinking the production method. And I think there are still stuff in that series that will be useful for people just to understand rigging, but it's not actually how I'm producing the shorts now. Uh, so I'm gonna cover that really quick. So each one of these shots starts out like this where I do the super rough thumbnail animation and then from there, I have a puppet build, uh, a rigged uh, grease pencil drawing that is just the body and the head. Th this is that drawing. But I'm going to show you really quick how the next step in how I animate is to go through and pose that body. Okay, you'll notice that there is no uh, mouth or eyes or anything in this, and that's because those parts are animated traditionally, you know, quote unquote traditionally in grease pencil. And the reason I've done that is because rigging that stuff was taking more time than it felt worth for this uh, particular episode because the, the characters in this are not as... Uh, are, are not featured in as many episodes. So it didn't make sense for me to spend all that time doing the setup on them. All right, so I'm gonna go over to the character. And anyone that's familiar with this channel probably has seen this rough setup. But, so I have the body here um, and it has, you know, the normal kinds of controls that any rig might have for a character. I got a head control. I have the main hip control. Obviously, this stuff is simple because these are uh, they're just a sausage for a body. Then I also have these controls, which if you followed one of my the head turn tutorials or anything like that, you you should have an idea how this works. But I will do a separate video specifically on this. And then I have the head turn. And if you've been following my first full character build tutorial, you know that each one of these is a separate drawing that I'm cycling through based on the position of this. All right, so to animate this, I, I pose it based on my thumbnail drawings. And, and then the eyes, the arms, the legs, and all that stuff are animated separately. So let me do a pose really quick. Now, the posing is fairly straightforward because there's not a lot of controls, but I do have to think about how, especially like if I want a more 3D drawing, and I have a tutorial that I'm gonna be doing on where I sometimes I turn off layers and replace drawings entirely with traditional, um, but I'll show that separate. So now that I have this pose, I have another object in here that is, I call it, hunt, the, the character's name is just Hunter right now. He's a hunter. Um, and then I have it uh, underscore trad for traditional. And all this object is, 
is for where I draw the eyes, the arms, and all that. So I have um, separate layers for each of the body parts. Um, and the reason I break them all into separate layers is because I'm doing a fairly limited animation, I don't want to have to redraw the legs if all I'm changing is the arms. And I'm actually just going to animate on one layer or do these drawings on one layer just to make it clear. So if I switch to draw mode, actually, before I do that, part of my rig, I have a couple of objects here that um, assist in my scene setup. So I have way out here, there's this arrow. And it's just an empty with the arrow, uh, single arrow that's scaled up huge. And the point of that is that I can go in here, wherever my camera is in a 3D scene, I can use that arrow to point the rig at the camera. And by having that arrow wherever my camera is, I can make sure that it lines up to that. And that, that way when I'm animating, the character is always perpendicular to the center line of the camera. The next object I have is here just to give me a consistent place to put a 3D cursor. So I have that object selected. I'll put cursor to selection. And now I'm gonna go back into my uh, hunter trad object. I'm going to go into my, I'm going to draw this on, on just the one layer, just for simplicity. So I have this red outline material, which I'd use to do my roughs uh, for the most part. And sometimes I'll make a different color if I have like a lot of confusing action going on. Um, like with say multiple arms or they're pass, passing the legs or whatever. I have my 3D cursor on this object, this little cone object that's, it, again, it's just an empty that is purely there just to give me something to place my 3D cursor. And I don't always use it. I also have in, like I will just place it somewhere in the scene because sometimes it needs to be farther away from the character because whatever objects are in the scene, which I'll show in a different tutorial. I need to go here where my drawings appear. Instead of origin, I want it to be 3D cursor and then I'll leave that on view. Typically, I, I check this in front um, while I'm doing the roughs because um, for whatever reason, it doesn't always show me my drawing as I'm drawing it unless that's on. So all of his mouth lines and stuff like that are drawn as part of uh, the rough animation or part of the, the facial animation because you know, if he smiles or something like that, I need the, those lines to be able to move. And he's also got this little cleft chin. And his arms, the, I cheat their arms a lot. Like the, the socket isn't fixed. Um, but I don't really know what his pose is here. And I actually try and avoid what doing what I just did. I, I prefer to draw... Um, in fact, I'm going to erase this and show you how I usually do it. And this is more of a, just a generic drawing tip, which I actually got from, let's see if I have that book handy. Anyway, I can't find the book. Uh, Grizz and Norm. They're, uh, they're a couple who put out a, a book on drawing tips. They don't seem to be as active on Instagram anymore. Although that could be Instagram who's hiding their stuff from me. But one of the things that I got, I believe it was from their book, is to draw the hand first. So let's let's say, you know, this is a spy show, so I'm going to give him a gun. Let's say he's pointing a gun at somebody. I'm going to place his hand where I want it and then figure out where I want the shoulder and then just try and just kind of draw a curved line to represent the arm and then just find that midpoint and like getting the length right is something that you just get kind of trial and error so this this would be my process for each one of these shots except for I'd, I'd be a little bit more concentrated on keeping these on separate layers 
unless I kind of know exactly what the animation is going to be. When it's like that, I sometimes will do all the roughs on a single layer or for like a short shot or a shot that doesn't have a lot of movement. But I will always, almost always ink the drawings on um, separate layers. And I'll, I'll show that now. So now that I have that thumbnail done, I'm gonna reduce the opacity of those layers. And let's say I go to my arm lines, I switch to the outline color, which all of these materials match the materials in the body. So when I append that into a scene, it brings all this stuff in as a, as a collection of ready to animate. So once I have the, the animation roughed out, I would come in here and you know spend a little bit more time doing these drawings and as as i've talked about in every single one of these videos i'm very purposely trying to not be perfect i don't want my outlines to be uh like like a show like Dexter's Laboratory that has these like really perfectly sculpted lines. I'm not not going for that. I'm noticing that the uh, hand did, didn't end up in quite the right spot. But anyway, this is just a demo. And then because of the way I'm doing this it, it, and some of the tools in Grease Pencil, um, I, I don't have a layer set up for the fill yet. It's actually easier for, for this to go through and do all the outlines first and then use this duplicate empty keyframes. And when I do that, I can then use the arrow, the up and down arrow keys to jump to each keyframe to draw. I don't have to sit there and make sure I'm on the right keyframe. Because believe me, I end up on the wrong keyframe all the time if I do that. So now I can go into this layer and do my uh, fill for the jacket. Switch to his skin color. And I don't actually have a gun color, but I'm gonna use this just because. And that's how I'll go through. For the eyes, it's a little bit different because, so if I go to my eye line area color. So as I sh showed you earlier, the, the characters don't have, I'm not drawing the eyes in there. And this was the part of the, the tutorial series that I was doing where I have the eyes as a separate object and they have uh, an, a rig for the eyelids and all that stuff. But I found it was easier to just draw it in the scene. So the, the scenes you saw earlier in the video, those were all hand drawn after the fact in the scene. And sometimes it's a little pain, pain in the ass, it's tedious, but animation is just like that sometimes. So I'm gonna duplicate that with keyframes. And then now I have to, the, I'm using this nose color. The eyelids are the same color as the nose and ears in this series. And I have to be a little bit careful here because I can, like if I wanted to, I could overdraw the whole thing. So I have to be a little bit careful as I'm filling this in. And then I would go through this process for, for the mouse. Um, like I'd fill in the tongue color, all that, all that stuff for any lip sync and all that business. Oh, I noticed I forgot the pupils. I'm definitely giving up a couple of things by doing this. I I initially had eye design or eye color to the characters, and I'm not adding it. I may change my mind later, but this short is done. I'm not, I'm not gonna go back into it. But let me show you a couple other things that I've run up against that are affecting how I'm going forward. So let me go back to frame one with this guy. I'm gonna turn off this. In the, tu in the tutorial on doing the turns, 
I set up a series of slices. So basically, I think it's every 15 degrees, maybe. I've decided for my main characters, like, like the Buck and Jones are the two main characters out of the entire series. I need more slices. There were frequently times where I wanted my character's nose to be halfway between those two parts. It means more work in the turns, but they're my main characters. In any production I've ever worked on, we spend more time on the main characters than we do on the others. So I'll have to do twice the number of drawings because I'll have an in-between on each of these, but it will give me that much more freedom. But one of the things that, um, I'm gonna show this one shot really quick and show you one of the things that I wanna do a tutorial for. In this shot, the character's entire head is drawn traditionally because the puppet build won't do this. They, their heads are very straight up and down, which for the most part works, but I wanted him looking down and I couldn't get that pose. Doing that, that sort of, uh, that sort of rig, like you see a lot of <clears throat> really cool, t cool 2D rigs where people can kind of just like move almost like you're looking at a 3D shape. That doesn't really work with these uh, sausage characters. So it was easier for me to just draw. And like I said, these characters aren't as in as many episodes. So I don't want to spend that effort building a rig for them that is that involved. Maybe for the main character, but still, I'll probably just animate those. Anyway, I have another series of tutorials. I, I do plan on uh, showing the later steps for the rig with the Mad Pierre character. I'm also gonna do a video on how I do the, the BG paintings. I'm gonna do a shorter overview and then I will do a detailed tutorial showing the entire painting and projection mapping process. I have a shot where I'm going to, or uh, another video where I'm gonna show the entire process of doing an animated shot. I'm actually working on a series of commercials that are in a similar style to this. They're still my sausage characters, but they're a little bit more simplified. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably have seen this character. It's built, I actually started with the same rig we were just looking at and just replaced the drawings. It's all the same thing. One of the fun things with this character in the animation that I'm doing is I'll be using the uh, squash and stretch controls a lot more. So I'm gonna be, in the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be animating a short for this. And probably what I'll do is record the whole process for everyone to see. And then I have a couple of other things that I wanna do. Actually, let me show you another one that I'm, another shot I wanna show that I think will be a good an, and an interesting thing for people to see. I have this shot here where I have this tube with writing on it. I actually animated a, a 3D object and then traced it with grease pencil, but there's a little bit more to it than that. As I always say, if there's something in particular out of what you've seen on my channel that you want me to go into more depth on, let me know because I, I'll, ha I'll be happy to cover that uh, as much as I can. And like I said, I'm trying to figure out how to actually do the release of this series. Um, I'm thinking about doing a limit, a short time release of the episode so people have a chance to see it without leaving it up forever, but I don't know. There's lots of debate between me and my friends on this. I'm also thinking about doing a Patreon. I don't think I have a big enough following for that yet to make it make any sense, but if anyone's interested in that kind of thing or you know, like buy me a coffee, what one of those things, uh, let me know what you think in the comments and hopefully I can finally get to getting these videos out regularly. The last year has been an absolute blur of long hours. This year could be, end up being the same. I don't know. <laughs> All right, everybody. See you in the next one.